Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, globalism, and diversification. This show is Center Stage. I am your host, Donna Blanchard, very proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. We are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very close to Kumukuhua Theater, by the way. I would like to let you know that if you would like information on our shows, you can find that at thinktechhawaii.com. We stream live on Spreaker.com and, oh, I said that wrong. We stream live on ustream.tv and Spreaker.com. And you can get the links if you go to thinktechhawaii.com. My guests today are Reb Bo Allen and Jason Quinn. They are accomplished actors with resumes full of both stage and screen engagements. They are both appearing in Lee Cataluna's play, Flowers of Hawaii, which reopens at Kumukuhua Theater on July 24th. I say reopens because we ran this show earlier in our season and it was so popular, we sold every single seat of the entire run that we have chosen to bring it back this summer for you. Do not miss it this time. And my guests now, thank you very much for being here. Reb Bo Allen and Jason Quinn. Hey, what's up? Thanks for having us. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome to have you guys at the table, finally. This, uh, this is great. I'm looking forward to the conversation with you. You're like my captive audience. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you have to answer my questions. We will. Um, but also, I cannot tell you how nice it is to sit in the office and hear everyone in the cast of Flowers of Hawaii back in the theater again. Mm, it's yeah. so cool. It's an awesome cast. It's amazing. It's amazing. Every, every once in a while that happens. You know, it's not every show. It's not. Yeah. It's not. And, Super rare. Yeah. And, it, and it just kind of, you, uh, you got a lot of uh, seasoned actors in this one, so everybody kind of came in with, okay, we're going to do this, and then all of a sudden this thing just sort of, I was going to say flowered. It and flowered. I say flowered. It, it flowered into this, into this Wow. Venue, so. <laughs> and this group, the show, not only did, well, we had a sold out run at Kumakuhua, and then we extended a weekend and sold that out, but then we took the show to Maui, Maui. and mm -hmm. they yeah. sold almost everything. Yeah. So Maui was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it, it just keeps going, and we've got people on the Big Island and Kauai interested in it. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, just keep going. I think it, I think <laughs> it, it, it resonates. Around. It was interesting to do the small, intimate. Uh, house at Kumu and then go to the Mac right. and adjust, yeah. you know, already doing it like six, eight weeks and then adjust the whole show yeah. to try to fill that and then it, and, and to, to hear that laughter roll all the way back, you know, all the way to the front. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. The responses must have seemed so much bigger. Oh, it yeah. was huge, yeah, yeah, especially afterwards because um, mm -hmm. we had to line up in a nice row <laughs> and meet all the audience members, which was great. Which is great, unless yeah. you're next to Kati. Right. Because then you're invisible, because Kati just steals right. all focus yeah. in a good way. Yeah, yeah, in a good way. She's oh, amazing. That's cool. <laughs> I yeah, there's, there's so much talent in the right. show. We yeah. could talk about every single person. <laughs> I, you know, how do you feel about that? When they initially said to me at the MAC that they, they like to have the actors line up after the show for the audience to talk with them, as an actor, mm -hmm. I. I usually feel like I, I, I separate the character right. from the person and I don't yeah. like to go out in costume. And so as the managing director, I said, mm, I don't <laughs> yeah. know, I don't think we want to put the actors through that. And they were kind of insistent and were happy to be there. And I said, all right, okay, we'll do it. And it seemed like it was really great. Yeah. It, it, it works. It, I, I'm, I'm torn about that as well. Um, I, I feel like you could you can go and if the audience wants to seek you out or, need, or wants to, you know, and it's always this weird thing, especially when you play yeah. in a piece that's this sort of heart wrenching, yeah. you know, or, or if you play a bad guy or, or something, it's like, you know, a lot of people don't, they, they're mad at the character and then they come out and they just glare at you and you're like, hey, I was just acting, yeah. you know? <laughs> but in this one, I think it's, it was a nice resolution because everybody wanted to know that it was such a family thing. I think they felt the audience felt invested in that family, and then they get to maybe you know shake hands and say goodbye one more time uh, or something. I, yeah, maybe this show is a little bit different. This show is very very different, yeah. but for those purposes, yeah. I always kind of feel like after a show, um, if someone who is in the audience talks to me, they are obligated to say something nice. So when they do that's, say something, see, nice, that's why as an actor, I don't like doing it. Yeah, because you know when the show's over. Like, I, I feel like, you know, like, you did your job as an actor, you performed that role, and then I'm interested to hear what the audience thinks. And um, a lot of times, yeah, you just feel that nervousness of, they're not gonna tell you the truth. 
God. They're not going to tell you if you're really. They can't help him. They sucked. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Because I would appreciate that. I'd appreciate it if, you know, if one of the moms walked up to me and just went, you know, you were a real, and I can't say the word I was going to say. But uh, I would appreciate that. Yeah. You know what I felt like? Because the cast was so long, too. I felt like I was in, like, Pop Warner, baseball, or football. It was yeah. like, good game, good game. Oh, and you had good game. <laughs> <laughs> Shake hands with the four audience. Please was keep like, moving. Good Thank game, you. Good game. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Have either of you done a Lee Cataluna show before? I never have. I, I think this is my first. Yeah. yeah. Her shows really resonate with, uh, th they resonate with me. I, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't right. grow up here. They really resonate with everyone within this community. Yeah, people I found almost identify with at least one or more of her characters every time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just they, really easy. Well, you, f you so easily Relatable. empathize with her characters, yeah. I especially, you know, an A team of actors showed up at mm -hmm. those auditions. So oh, that's you Lee. have the. That's <laughs> it's Lee. It's like, what yeah. shows? What, she's doing a show this year? What show? What, what? Oh, yeah. yeah. When are we all Yeah, we hadn't right? done a show at Kumu in, yeah. I don't know, I, I did uh, shows through HTY maybe once through Kumu. Mm -hmm. But um, me and him were looking on the internet looking for auditions, and when we found out that Lee had a play, we read it. I called him up and said, "This is the play this year. Right. You got to come down and you got to uh, read for this play." And he read it. Right. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. What's the best way to say this? I didn't see. I didn't see the big picture. Yeah. When I read it, and I it, was, it was. Yeah, he saw it. And that's actually the thing with us. Sometimes, like, he he won't like a show, or he won't like a show, and I'll like the show, yeah. and then he'll trust me. Or I don't like a show, and then he's like, "No, this is a good show. This is a good show." And we we have long talks about the pros and cons of tearing apart scripts and stuff. And I didn't yeah. see the big picture. You know, these are broken down scenes, and I didn't see the, I didn't see the connecting thread. I didn't know how Harry was going to do that. Well, I heard that it was Harry, and I know that it's Lee, and I know that it's Kumu, and I saw all the heavy hitters coming in, and I said, okay, well, all the ingredients are there. You know, this, I had to, I kind of just went in, he, he knew, I'm not going to take that from you, you knew, <laughs> I didn't know, but I knew that all the talent was there and, and I was blind all the way up until the second week of shows. The second week of shows was when I knew that oh, this was really? magic, yeah, that it was magic. That it was magic. <laughs> And then it's magic is rare. You'll have a good show. It doesn't have magic. Yeah. But I didn't know that it was magic until the second week when when I when I got a chance to hide behind the curtain and watch the whole thing. And I saw that the characters resonated like you'd have a character in the beginning of the show and the audience remembered it. It's like when the character in the last he says, you know, I'm not going to give that away, but he, he <laughs> says something that let and the audience laughs outright. And the only way that they could laugh was that they, they remembered something the from the first yeah. 10 minutes of the yeah. show. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Right. And I, I believe that happens because there is so much depth to, depth yeah. to the characters, and that's, mm -hmm. that's the writing as well as the yeah. directing and the acting. And yeah. right. Harry did a, he did a wonderful job of casting and mm -hmm. he, of seeing the big picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that he, really, he really is so strong in that bringing all of the pieces right. together. And Lee keeps doing that. In every every ten minute segment, she'll go. This yeah. is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Nope. This is what's happening. And and and, and she does this great thing as a playwright too, where she flips things on you. As an audience yeah. member, you're laughing at something, and in the very end of it, the seriousness comes out, and then you kind of recount and go, "Man, why was I laughing at that?" Because it was funny right. and it's relatable. But then it, it also hits you in a certain place too, where emotionally you're thinking, "Like, man, I, yeah, that is serious," you know. Right. Yeah, but don't you, okay, so he, he, sometimes when I'm watching a show, I will have a reaction, and, and, and when mm -hmm. they're written well, these things will happen. Right. I think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But there's something about Lee's work that sort of gives you permission mm -hmm. to forgive yourself for that, because it's all about humanity. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, it comes from the heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and these, these things that are wrong, you know, are, are wrong, she's not, she's not, um, She's not telling you this is right and this is wrong. She's showing you the difficulty of how we're all struggling with whether this is right or whether this is wrong. We're all struggling with that. And she seems to pick these topics and, and present them in a way where it was like, I recognize that. And my family member goes through that. And we're all upset about that. And now I see that everybody, it's like a connecting like thread. You know, everybody goes through that, and there's a lot of heart in it. It's coming from a good place. It's not a condescending, I'm a writer, and this right. is right, and this is wrong. But it's you done know? with really good writing, yeah. which is amazing for an actor. You read a script, mm -hmm. and you're like, I want to say these words, you know? Yes, yeah. yes. And I, I think that's something that we managed to do very well at Kumo is mm -hmm. d develop 
plays, right. yeah. and and, and again, artists, that, the, uh, and develop artists. Mm -hmm. it, it, again, it's a strong suit of Harry's that he works with uh, a lot of the playwrights to yeah. to help develop the works. Sometimes once they're open, there's still mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. happening. Um, Lee's pieces come, you know, like fully formed, like out of Zeus's head. <laughs> <They're ready to laughs> Dionysus. Yeah. Well, you gotta, you know, it's, it's interesting that circle because what you say about Harry, I've heard Lee saying time and time again how much she trusts Harry. Yeah. And she's going in, she's trusting and going in blind on a couple of issues with Harry. And I've heard Harry say how much he trusts Lee wor Lee's work. It's all in the script. It's all in the script. Yeah. And then all of the actors are trusting Harry. Harry's trusting the actors. The actors are trusting the stage crew. The, you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. And that's where that, that untangible sort of magic, I magic. think, happens. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. OK, Let, let's do this now. Yes. OK, see how I just wrapped that up? <laughs> nice. Nice. Waiting for the paper to flip. I was looking. I was looking. not flipping yet. <laughs> the paper's not flipping yet. Get away, my secret. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. Is this live? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, here's what I would like to do. Neither of you have done Lee Cataluna pieces before, mm -hmm. but you have some history yes. at Kumu mm -hmm. and uh, plenty of history in the area. So, Reb, how about uh -huh. you want to start and just tell us a little bit about your uh, acting background in the in the area? Um, to bounce off the Lee thing, one of the first plays I actually saw in high school was The Mayor. Oh. Lee Cataluna wrote it. Um, it was only because my brother was in it. He played a cop for two seconds on stage. Yeah, he was like a tech guy back then or whatever. But, uh, you know, theater was never... You play a cop? No, you're playing a cop. No, I'm playing a cop in a lead play. That's, that ain't even... Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> but, uh, no, for me, um, like, I didn't grow up doing theater. Uh, the high school I went to, I went to Campbell High School. We didn't have really a theater production class. We had a commercial media class, so learning how to do all the behind-the-camera stuff, we had. So in order for us to do that, we had to have something to film. So we'd make, you know fun videos, whatever, and whatnot. And it was just a oh. thing for class. But that was where I think the first, I don't know, the first 18 started. And then when I got out of high school, I went to college, it was just thrown away. I was going to go get a physical therapy degree. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I wanted to go to Oregon State at one point. But, uh, wow. you know, uh, I was real built in high school, and uh, a director saw me. He goes, man, you have an amazing physique. And I said, stop hitting on me. <laughs> and he goes, I'm not hitting on you. Uh, would you like to do you a play? You didn't tell him to stop. I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, tell me more. And attention? <laughs> Come on. I was like, yeah, keep it up. But no, he asked me to audition for a play. And he goes, I go, what is it? He goes, oh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. I had never heard of Rocky Horror Picture Show. I heard the word oh. Rocky. Oh, and I <laughs> thought it was like Rocky Balboa. Yes. How, yeah, so not accustomed to theater or whatever. So I went. And I'm like, okay, so I can play a boxer. Yeah, this is cool. I show up, and I find out it's a musical. Um, Did you do the dance? I didn't do the dance, but oh, the, this is the best thing. Was I walk in there, the girl, everybody was already casted. Just Rocky wasn't casted. So the girl that was playing Janet, she goes, oh, my God, you're amazing. You look perfect. And she goes, can you sing? I go, sing? Uh, I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. I wasn't <laughs> at that point yet. But the guy that was auditioning against me, everybody was going, no, he's, he doesn't have a physique like you. He's nothing to the... The guy looked like he belonged on Baywatch, and he sung opera. Oh. And he was phenomenal. He was amazing. And he got the role. Oh. <laughs> and I got a phone call afterwards that was saying, hey, you suck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you for trying. So I said, you know what? Um, yeah, I got I to gotta learn how to do this. So the guy who called me, his name was Paul Cravath. He taught classes at Leeward. I took his class um, as a 221 student. I went to go audition for HTY because he would always talk about HTY in the community and they do professional work. And um, the day before I went to audition, he heard my two monologues and he said they were horrible. He told me to change them. The day before. Yeah, I told him, I said, I don't have time to change them, so thank you very much, I'm gonna stick with these. And I went into audition for uh, the former artistic director, Mark Lutwak, and I wrote intern on my paper because I didn't think I was good enough to get paid. So I wrote intern oh. and um, did my audition for Mark. Mark jumped out of his chair and uh, he goes, if I offered you a job right now, would you take it? A, mo a money paid job as an actor, not intern? And I said, yeah, hell yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. I, I took the job and I uh, left school for six years. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And just oh, company wow. actor for HTY for, for a while. Uh, the monologues that you, you don't have to remember mm -hmm. what they were, but yeah. uh, how, how 
So you knew that you needed a couple of monologues to do yeah. this? Did you get some help in the preparation of that? Um, I did. I used, I used two basic monologues that he teaches in class, the directing teacher I had, Paul Kavath, and um, I just did them my way. A lot of shenanigans. And it, it worked for Mark? It worked for Mark, yeah. Mark, you know, Mark likes actors that are physical and that can instantly connect to pieces mm -hmm. and they can also have a nice spontaneity in the moments, you know, that they're, they're not reciting. That they're they're trying to live it, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess I did that good enough for Mark. So, yeah, he gave me a job, which was cool. Awesome. Yeah. Do you remember? Sorry, Q. I'm we're good. Gonna, we're gonna see on this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've, I've known this guy for a long time. I'm hearing things I never heard before. Oh, so. excellent. <laughs> so, okay. So what you're talking about being able to get into the moment, uh -huh. the depth of the moment right. within a character. Uh, did you find that you? You just naturally went into this? Instinctually, I would say I had 75% of what I needed just off of instincts. Um, you know, because um, before I took his class, actually, I would sit and I'd watch other actors. I was scared to take his class, basically. So I'd go in there and I would, I'd hide out, watch other actors perform their scenes for like a year straight. So then when I started doing it, I already kind of had a good third eye of what not to do from watching people. Uh -huh. And then um, the rest of it, kind of came from just working with directors over the years because I never went back to school for acting. So everything was working with as Learned many... on the job. Yeah, working with as many different directors as possible and watching the other actors. Like, he knows this. Whenever I'm in a play, I will know almost everybody's lines because I don't leave the room. I mm -hmm. stay in there and I usually... See, unless I'm smoking. <laughs> <laughs> unless I need a cigarette. Fair enough. Yeah, I sit in there and I watch all the actors because I'm just... I'm a fan. I'm amazed. Nice. You know, and I want to see what makes them good. An old salt taught me that back in the day. We, we yeah. kind of connected on that, too. It's like, the best thing you can do as an actor is be a thief. Yeah. You know, so you watch all the other actors, and if you see something that's good, steal it outright. Yeah. Because your voice is different, your body's different, right. your movements are different. So, so you find them using a moment a certain way or, or doing something that's interesting to you. You can take that and hold that in your little bag of tricks, and then <laughs> three years later, whip that out, and it'll work perfect. You oh, know? yeah. Yeah. Well, and because in order to do it, you have to figure out why it's good. Yeah. How did right. they do and that? That's right. the knowledge. How did that they do that? Dissecting it, yeah, just constantly yeah. meditating. How did on they know to pause for a half right. a second on that? Right. And then they went up on their voice there like that, and it sounded great, you know? Maybe I'll try that next time yeah. it's organic, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. I've had moments, this is going to sound awful, but I've had real life moments in which there was a great deal of emotion, you know, mm -hmm. and a small part of me thinks, well, I'm going to use this. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 You know, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not all the time, but, yeah. you know, so every now no, and but, then. And that's, that's the thing as an actor, too. Like, if you go through something hard in your life and, and you're recognizing that you've never felt this way and you've never sounded this way and you're doing things way out your wheelhouse, you should sort of go, <laughs> yeah. wait a minute. No, yeah. <laughs> I, rem is. I remember getting on a fight in a fight on the North Shore with six guys, and I remember thinking I, I got beat up. But I remember thinking, this is great. This is awesome. <laughs> I have something that I can emotionally lock into in a role. You know, it's easy yeah. for me to go backstage, go back to that moment. And then, the, but at the same time, when I go on stage, I don't want to be thinking about that. No. I want to be thinking, listening to the person in front of me. But so, in rehearsal. But in rehearsal, in rehearsal yeah, well. to and, find and stuff. And before rehearsal, and, yeah, yeah, right. that's where I. Yeah, right. do a lot of my thinking about yeah. a role and what, yeah. what you might be able to pull out of your bag and insert here and there, mm -hmm. and then you just do it. And I think just by virtue of witnessing it and then thinking about it, it comes mm -hmm. when you yeah. need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah? Definitely. Definitely. So what about you, Q? What's your, what's your history of acting here? Uh, history of acting? Well, you went way back. Yeah, I, I forgot to say, he was actually one of the guys I would watch yeah, on TV Campbell. in my media class. So he oh. was a couple years before me, same school, right. same production class. And I would watch the little home movies that he would make <laughs> of him jumping over somebody's fence and getting shot into a pool in Montecilo yeah. or something. Yeah, that was. So we all knew who Q was when we were freshmen. Yeah, was, Rod, Rod Martin yeah. At, uh, used to teach at Campbell High School, the media class. But he did this thing where he said, uh, here's all this stuff. Go play. Go, Go do, do something want. with it. And it was like, wait, I can oh, take all this equipment yeah. and go do something with it. And I was, and nobody was doing anything. Nobody was, yeah. So it was like, oh man, I made movies and TV shows and sketches. And, and that's actually, I learned a lot um, for, for how to be an actor and what, what plays right, what doesn't, you know what I mean? And the whole process and stuff, so. You had an opportunity to see it yeah. right away, too. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry I asked yeah. you that question and now I gotta cut you off. I got oh, too good. into the conversation and I got Ian <laughs> in my ear saying I gotta I break it. and I flipped them. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. You are watching Center Stage on Think Tech Hawaii. Okay, this is Think Tech, and one of our favorite shows is Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy. And it, it uh, goes four to five every Wednesday right here from Think Tech uh, in Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. And my co-host is Ray Starling from Hawaii Energy. Ray, do you like the show? I love the show. It's, uh, it's great to see all the new people coming in with new ideas about how to save energy, get us off of fossil fuel, and that's what it's all about. So Hawaii, the state of clean energy, uh, see us on Wednesday afternoons at four o'clock. I knew he'd say that. Thanks, Ray. Hi, we're back and we are live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. We're coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu very near Kumukuhui Theater. I am talking with two actors who are in the upcoming show at Kumukuhua, Reb Bo Allen and Jason Quinn, and we're talking about their experience in acting, how you got started. Yes. Okay, so you're talking about at Campbell High School? Yeah, Campbell High School was a, was a, um, was a, a, a sort of a breeding ground of, uh, <laughs> it was uh, definitely a, a fertile place for us to like just be creative. A and petri dish, is yes. that what you're saying? Yes. We didn't know what we were doing, but we had equipment to play with. Right, right. Okay. And you awesome. see glimpses, like you see glimpses in the work where you go, like you know, the whole you can shoot something for an hour, and then but yeah. you see something and you go, wait, that that's kind of cool. That part worked. <laughs> yeah. That part, you know, and, and all that other stuff didn't. But then from there, um, I messed around, just hung out in Hawaii for a while, and then got an opportunity to audition for the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York City. So me and my now wife, girlfriend then, flew to San Francisco, auditioned for it, got it, got full scholarship, fly over there to New York City, and it was just, it was everything you think of if you want to be an actor. You know what I mean? <laughs> everything was like, New York City, coming from Ever Beach, yeah. you oh, know? Yeah. Small little, little town, Ever <laughs> Beach, and then going to New York City, it was intoxicating and dizzying, you know? And uh, went through the school and then auditioned out there and did, uh, got my equity card, the coveted equity card and the SAG card and auditioned and uh, did some, uh, did a show called Big Apple and did some uh, Shakespeare Festival in New York City. It was just lucked out after years of trying, lucked out and <laughs> yeah. okay. but lucked out and, and then went to uh, Los Angeles. And that was at the time when my managers and my agents were saying, you have to go to Los Angeles before you turn 30. You will regret it for the rest of your life uh, if you don't at least try. And I was like, no, I want to be an, a real actor, a stage actor. Yeah, I want to be in New York City. I'm, I'm in my element. But I went and uh, got on CSI Miami. And uh, when my son was born, though, I was like, I'm not raising my son in Los Angeles right. or New uh, York City. So came back to Hawaii and hooked back up with the with, uh, old crew and, and started looking to see what, how, how to be a part of the community theater situation here in uh, Hawaii. Yeah, and we actually met over a poker game when he came back and okay. filled him in on everything that was going yeah. around the community-wise theater. Yeah, and he, he opened a book me. for me. He kind of looked at me and went, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he realized, he was like, oh, okay, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> right, right. And he took me to some shows, too, because I was really sort of like, I, I hate to admit it, but I was just the whole, ah, I'm doing New York City, I'm doing theater, I'm doing, I'm not going to, what's Hawaii? Because Hawaii wasn't, I, I didn't really look into it before I left. I was just like, ah, you know? And then when, I, when he took me to some shows and I saw that real work Great is being work. done here, yeah. you know, real, yeah. real work. You know, the, the kind of stuff that, that all of the little teeny nuanced moments and everything, you're not what you think of when you think of community theater, you know? Yeah. And I was like, yes, I have to be a part of this, you know? So yeah, he, he was right. I was, I was just kind of like, yeah, whatever. That's and then cool. he took me and I saw yeah. it and I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta jump in. I wanna play. I, you know, I didn't, not on the same scale, but I went mm -hmm. through um, working in professional theater and yeah. at times, I refer to it as selling my artistic soul in yeah, order yeah. to pay my mortgage. Right, yeah, right. This, this happens. And when I got off of that wheel and went mm -hmm. back to community theater, it was it was hard, I will just yeah. say it. Yeah. It was hard, it's humbling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I realized the work that was being done, you know, the, the word amateur comes from amour. You do it uh -huh. just because you love freaking it. love it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and then it was so much easier. I wasn't looking at 
what show had the highest paycheck. Yeah. I was looking at the show that was the script right. and the director yes. mm -hmm. and the team I wanted to be on. And what show is going to challenge you in a way yeah. and give you an experience and give the audience uh, an experience in that sort of centrifugal and it just adds to each other? What's, what, are you, what are you going to get and what are you going to give out of it? You know? Right. What are you going to walk away with? Because right. that's yeah. what really matters, mm -hmm. what right. everybody walks away from right. the theater with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So how long ago was it that you came back? Uh, it's been four years now, three. Oh. But I still yeah. go to Los Angeles. I'm still, I'm still a working actor. I still have to go over there. I'm, I set up a studio like this in my house, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, DVDs, yeah, I, I, I can yeah. audition now. I've gotten to a point in my career where I'm able to get the first audition from here. I'll do the first audition here, and then if they are looking at me, they want to meet me or something like that, then I will fly to Los Angeles or fly to New York, and go for the callback or go for the meeting. And so that's been working out now. I, up in the last two years, before that, I had to fly back and forth, you know, oh, and yeah. stay over in LA for pilot season and then come back. And, you know, my kid is six, you know, so that was happening at like four and five. I was like, this is not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then when The Last Resort came and I, I got that character, then I was like, okay, now I've got a little bit of clout so I can just say, no, I'm auditioning from here first. And if you're interested, then I'll fly out, you know, so I don't have to just sit in LA. Cool. I don't like LA much. <laughs> You know, I was just there a few weeks ago. It's dry. It is. It's dry and yeah. it's all like spread out. Yeah, and it's not a city. Everywhere you want to go, you want to go to the Seven Eleven. It takes a half hour yeah. to get there. Yeah, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna go grab a burrito, and I'm home an hour and ten minutes later. Yeah. Like, what? And yeah. that's just so normal. Here, I put gas in my car once a month. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's a nice place. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nice people there. There's nice communities oh, there. I just, it's you know, it's just not my thing. And cool work. Yeah. So you were in Last Resort. Yes, and here in Hawaii. I have this written. Yeah, Last Resort and Hawaii Five O. And Hawaii Five O. And, and you've done same some thing. work on Last Hawaii. Resort. And oh, I'm Hawaii both as well. Yeah. 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 Together. Uh, Separate. No. Yeah, we yeah. didn't get we didn't yeah. get any scenes together. Yeah. Have you been in shows together other than this? Is this our first show? This is our officially first show. officially. Right? Yeah. We we talked about for years Trying about to. how we wanted to do a show together and. We're still looking for a script because yeah. we want to do a two-person show someday. Yeah. But um, yeah, this was our first official show together. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So that work you were doing in the the lab at um, Campbell High School, uh -huh. that gave you an opportunity not only to play and see the result of your work right away, but you were writing. Yeah. You were coming up with yeah. creative content as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that propelled me. I, I, I do little indie projects and I direct short films and I write scripts, and as does he as well. That that sort of, I think, opened a doorway for both of us and for yeah. a couple of other students to just try just, everything. Right, to have no filters, because we didn't have any filters. None. We could do whatever we wanted, literally, right. as long as we didn't break the cameras. Right. Yeah. I, I actually so, did break one. Yeah, I know you did. I, I didn't You broke the water camera I didn't that I wanted to break. use two years later it still worked to make a film. A... They were like, I was like, what happened to the water camera? Oh, Jason Quinn. Ah, man, I don't know if that's the... <laughs> you Maybe. still owe that <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, no, they just gave us, you know, free reign to just, just play, which was awesome. You know, Rod Martin, uh, he used to teach improv mm -hmm. back in the day, or he used to have some improv group in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and I think he still does. It was Campbell's um, Instant Soup. Think it was yeah, so he was just one of those great special teachers that was real fun that just said, all right, kids, come on inside, and here's the stuff. Yeah. Go have fun. And, you know, along the way, he would try to teach us, you know, certain yeah. things. And But for the most part, he was just... Just let you go. Yeah, and yeah. it was awesome. That's... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm thinking of the Ayn Rand school of politics right. in which you just let people govern themselves, and uh -huh. that's when their greatest comes out. Right. And a lot of people are like, boy, did she just take a turn. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, you know that—that that is when the greatest uh, of a person comes out is when you have that amount of trust uh -huh. and freedom. And it yeah. didn't work for a lot of students. It, 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 you know, a lot of students didn't seize the opportunity. You know, but some others did, but like some Gerard others did. Elmore, yes. Brandon yeah. Dumlao. Yeah, yeah, they all went on to go do, you know. Doom Lao, I, I copied a couple of his because mm -hmm. that's when we were like, oh, wait, we, I can make a whole movie if I can do it. Yeah. If I'll spend the 36 hours editing it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's where a lot of the time gets spent. Right. So anything, I mean, now that you can do webisodes for, on the cheap, really, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. do you have any interest in there? Uh, yeah, I, he, he's got something he's planning. Yeah, I, um, I, I have a production company called uh, Blind Sight Productions. And I work with uh, Jason Lau Talk Story Productions. I've done two 
uh, projects with them, and I, I view them as a very strong production company here in Hawaii doing not only mainland projects, the big budget mainland projects, but then they do their little uh, projects for the Hawaii International Film Festival as well. And they're, they sort of have a nice little bead on small productions and putting things online and putting things on the web. So I'm sort of trying to follow that sort of path there for, because you can do things for very little money now. Right. Yeah. $5,000 will get you something really nice and right. polished. And you can get, and it is so easy for something to be seen and heard mm -hmm. if, it, if it has that resonating quality right. that people, right. makes people want to say, hey, you have to watch this. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't it be amazing if, uh, if, uh, <laughs> wouldn't it be amazing if she put her stuff down on film? I keep Legally. pushing it. Yeah. If, if you know what? Jay Figel. <laughs> hi, Jay. Um, and I were just talking about filming the shows, and, and uh -huh. he is going to come over and, and film some of the, the rehearsals of it. And I said, I always have a resistance to filming what was put together right, for Right, because it's stage. not designed to translate. It's, it's not, not designed to yeah. translate, and particularly in our space because we use so mm -hmm, many different mm -hmm. angles with the audience so right. often. Um, I just wanted to say it. I know. <laughs> just but, throw it out because I just want to see her work. But up on it's the a story that a lot of people, it, it, it's so easy, it's much easier to bring a piece to a broader audience uh -huh. if you can put it on film. Right. And mm -hmm. I do think that there are pieces, and this is one of them, that d deserve that. Mm -hmm. If it was Flowers of Hawaii, how would the, the, the two grandmother scenes go? <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> that's a very risky scene, and you guys should come watch it. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we can't even talk about it. We can't it talk here. about <laughs> it. <laughs> can't, can't, can't even totally mime it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hilarious. And, yeah. Yeah, just imagine well, that on film. <laughs> we do things with do? camera angles that right. would. Yeah, the, the POV shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we make that, Stay we make that work. Stay yeah, the show's not really a family show for most families. It's a well, fa it's about it is a family. It is yeah. it, 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 it just teeters that fence. Right. Of, yeah. It does, yeah. But the little ones, right. you don't want asking questions about what just happened there. Yeah, it depends on the little ones, though. It, yeah. It does. You know, it, it, I, I haven't seen too young with people, and my wife and I have talked about my son, you know, he's like, he's six, and it's like, he comes to some of my shows, and then some of the other shows he doesn't come to, and scheduling-wise, I got away with not addressing it uh, through the <laughs> through the first run, now the remount's coming, and we're oh. talking about it, and, you know, and uh, I don't think so yet, maybe two or three more years. <laughs> You're going to have, it, yeah, once you expose your child to that, there's a whole vocabulary you have right. to explain. He doesn't, have the, he doesn't have the reference <laughs> yeah. point yeah. yet, it's too early. I think that a lot of times, the, the last show that you just did, Koi Like the uh -huh. Fish, there's, um, I, I don't remember, you know, any language or adult risque scenes in there. Just the S word, that was it. Yeah. Minor. Yeah, yeah, minor. Yeah. But when people call the box office, we would let them know it, it's it's not for younger kids mm -hmm. because they're just going right. to be bored. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're just going to be bored with the subject matter. And a, a lot of Kumukuhua shows, mo most of our shows, are they. I don't want to. I don't want to use this word. They don't pander to a younger audience. Right they down the street is right for the heart of it. Yeah. Right down the street, so <laughs> as, and they're doing amazing theater yeah. that's yeah. still still gripping and still. And still right on the cutting edge, and then is perfect for that age group. So yeah, what um, are you going somewhere? What are you doing? I know you. Well, like, I, I don't know. Like it's a thousand time. degrees outside, so my shirt's clinging to me. <laughs> <laughs> so every once in a while, I just gotta kind of adjust it. Yeah, it's really. You're gonna hot say today. something serious. Thank it's you for that. Hot. <laughs> I appreciate that. And don't ever change your hair. <laughs> my hair. We were coming in the car, and I was like, "What should I do with this? Because it just goes straight up like a chicken. It's good. It's it good. just goes. It's, it's, it's a. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's real, um, real nuts. Other than HTY, uh -huh. what other theaters on the island have you both worked in? I've done Diamond Head, um, pretty much every theater except for Manoa Valley. Oh. I've done Army. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say every community theater. And Tag. Tag and Manoa Valley is the only two I haven't, um, pretty much. Yeah. And then when I was in New York, I worked for the Living Theater Company for a little bit. How long were you in New York? I was in New York for about a year, a year and a half, two years. Oh. Yeah. And what made you come back? Oh, I got a contract to do a Waikiki Nei show. So they did a show at level four. <laughs> yeah, basically they poured in a ton of money to renovate uh, 
the building where the level four nightclub was. And they had a show that was originally promoted as a Circus du Soleil type show, which was completely wrong. They should have never promoted it like that. But the contract was so good that I just left New York. Uh, you know, they called me on my phone. They had a DVD that I left with them. And they said, we'd like you to come to an audition. I said, I can't, I'm in New York. And they said, okay, well, we'll, we'll send you a contract then. Oh, Enough I like zeros that deal. Make that Yeah, viable. so they sent me yeah. the contract. I flew back home, uh, worked for them, and unfortunately, it was right at the time of the recession. So, that's just, shortly that's just, lived. That's just you. you I don't. Oh, I don't want to go back. Zero, zero, zero <laughs> looks just like oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh I'll come back. yes, I will. <laughs> I, 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 I flipped the paper. I saw it. <laughs> but we're gonna come right back to that. I'm sorry. I keep losing track of time because I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> uh, we're gonna take a short break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia In Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Bye. on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, we're back. This, this show is Center Stage. We are coming to you from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu at the Think Tech Studio. By the way, I forgot to mention, if you would ever like to come down and watch one of our shows from the studio here, email j at thinktechhawaii.com and we will hook you up. Okay, so I'm sorry I mm -hmm. cut you off in the middle okay. of your story. You, they, you got a contract with lots of zeros on it and you said, oh, okay. Not that I'll many zeros, back. but uh, <laughs> it yeah, it was, too. well, because, you know, I was living in Harlem. I was living on, I was living on 116th Street. <laughs> um, rent was, um, luckily I had a great roommate, but rent still was super high. So honestly, when that when they offered that uh, contract for the Waikine show and then promoting it to be one of the biggest shows that Hawaii's ever had, it was like, how can I not say yeah, no? Because I mean, yeah. the whole reason I left, you know, for Hawaii to go to New York was to do shows, do shows to become a professional, you know, in a, in a further aspect. Mm -hmm. And I went, well, this is my backyard mm -hmm. and they're offering me this. So yeah, duh, mm -hmm. this would be awesome. Because the funny thing about New York, if you go to New York, you go to any bar in New York, you'll testify to this. Somebody asks you, oh, where are you from, my friend? Where are you from? Whatever their accent is. And you what say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was your English was accent English from accent? Uh, Closer. Oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what, whenever they Jamaican. ask you, where are you from? <laughs> if you say Hawaii, the first thing out their mouth is, what the hell are you doing here? Because they all want to get, you know, this is paradise. Oh, the worst, you're riding on the train in the winter, and they have the, the, the promotion for Hawaii, and it shows your backyard where you yeah, grew like, up, and you're just and like... you step off the train, you're like... Oh. Bing! Uh, oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, there's black snow on the ground, there's oh, seagulls goodness. waiting for the trash. You don't get an audition out. for like three months. Right. Like, why am I here? So, yeah, that was the whole you thing. You guys paint a lovely picture of New <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot better stuff than that. I mean, That's just one little Yeah, story. but in comparison to Hawaii, yeah. So wait, go back for just a second. <coughs> what was your journey like to New York? How did that decision happen? I was sitting in a uh, Shakespeare Fest. They do a Shakespeare Festival here in Hawaii. I was sitting in a first rehearsal for Taming the Shrew. I was playing the lead, Petruchio. And the director said, if anybody wants to quit, raise your hand. And I raised my hand. <laughs> and she said, you're my lead. You can't quit. And I said, absolutely. I think I'm going to leave tomorrow and just buy a ticket and go to New York. And I bought a ticket and I left. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't speak to you anymore. She does sometimes. I see her around town every once in a while. <laughs> She's a great woman. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to name names. Um, okay, so yeah. then you came back for the Waikiki Nei show. Yes. And what happened there? Uh, so the recession hit and they lost their line of credit. So pretty much uh, we were already two months, I think, into running that show uh, for our for audience members. And... Uh, I forgot which person in their company, but someone came in and basically said, hey, actors, come together, uh, all performers. Tonight, make it your best. It's your last. And everybody went, what? You know, people left Uolena on Maui to come do the show. People literally, like, moved, moved to this island. So I left New York, you know, and uh, pretty much everybody, once they realized that that person was not lying, that that was the truth, 
ran outside and was calling their old bosses to get their jobs back. And that's just the life of a performer. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's feast and famine. It really is. Yeah. So. so how long were you back before that day happened? Before that day, I think I was back for seven months. Oh, gosh. Seven months, yeah. A year. Yeah, we, we rehearsed, I think, for five months, and we only ran for two, and then it shut down. Oh. Yeah, it was a five-month and, and rehearsal. And was it all that? The show? Yeah. The show had some really beautiful aspects to it. The problem that um, it seemed that the audience member wanted a story, all the audience that we had wanted a story to follow, and it was vignettes. It was vignettes, and... For me personally, they had people from Canada that were directing a Hawaii-based show. Mm. You know, they didn't know the culture. Yeah. They didn't know, this, they, they researched it, but that's not the same as being part of the culture and knowing it. So, and on top of that, building it as a Circus de Soleil production, which it was not, was a big mistake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah. Okay, we have about 10 minutes left, and I, mm -hmm. I'd like for both of you to take just a little bit of time, if you will, and talk about your process you get a script and, right. and what you go through yeah. from there right I'd, I'd like to talk about that if we could uh, you like yeah you know um, well like in this case for for flowers you know looking at it start breaking it down and start thinking about like what 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 do I have to offer this it, is is what I bring going to push the show forward you know because you kind of get that tendency when you first start out is like I want the lead you know what I mean? Like that, that's what you want. You know, know every you every actor wants it. I want the lead. <laughs> you know, and then as you as you get further, like in what we were talking about earlier, when you start doing it for the love and for the you know, and we start seeing what the whole process of storytelling is, you start seeing, well, how how am I helping this along? You know, and where where do I fit in better, or what's the best place I can fit in to tell this story? And um, then I'll take a look at it and I'll I'll go, okay, I think that I can I think that I can do this. I think that I can serve this piece. Um, how, how does my experiences coalesce with the experiences of this character? What, what, am, what have I gone through already that is, that is real to what this person's going through? And if I'm playing a character that's very far from me, very far from my normal everyday, how I act and stuff like we were talking about closer, like that was, that was so far from me. I, you know, the, the character is very cowardly. The character is very sh shrinky and, and, and small. And, and I had to, and he just did some really gutless things that I thought were very gutless and made me and sort of feel it. bad inside. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, I was just like, and then, but I have, to, I have to go there and I have to try to make that make sense so that I'm not thinking that, that I'm not disgusted by my own actions if I'm doing that. Right. You know. You the, the character has a purpose right. for what they're doing. And the character yeah. doesn't know he's bad or he's good or that he's a coward. That's not, everybody has their, everybody's the lead in their own life. Right. A bad guy doesn't go, I'm a bad guy unless he's Tony Montana. You know, <laughs> it's, it doesn't. Bad ass. Right, bad ass, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, that's, and so that's, that's sort of my process. And then, of course, then you get down to the nuts and bolts of, of memorizing and working your voice or taking on an accent, even if it's a Hindu Jamaican. And uh, trying to work. I thought it was Armenian. <laughs> Go back I, I inside your <laughs> house, Orlando. <laughs> so you know that's that's sort of my process, sort of uh, a general, a generalized sort of sweep of my process. Okay. Do, do you? I always feel like uh, if I'm playing a character that's, you know, despicable, you, mm -hmm. can, you can't view it that way. No. Right. But I, I always manage to find something within me that says, yeah, I would do that in those yeah, circumstances. Right. You have no, to. Yeah, and you have to be able to identify with it somehow. Yeah. At, yeah. The end of, at the end of runs where I'm playing a character like that, it's just I can't wait to stop rationalizing it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I can't wait to get back into my, my identity and say, no, that dude is a coward. Or, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like that guy. I don't like that, you know? Yeah. And, and, but when, you, when I'm in it, I have to I have to constantly rationalize everything he's doing and then why he's doing it so that it's good, it's right, it's just. And he's he's the good guy. Yeah. He's the he's the likable. So you can fully guy. commit. Yeah. yeah. So you can fully commit. So you can look into your partner's eyes on stage and and, and laugh it off or smile at something that you did or justify what you did and make those lines ring true because I'm right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but don't you find just from walking around in that character's skin that you can forgive them? Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think it. Uh, I believe that being an actor makes you a better person. Oh yeah. There. Yeah. I said it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, because you can identify with you're you're trying to step into other people's shoes. You're trying to identify mm -hmm. with them, and and then it helps you to it opens your focus. Right, it widens it very yeah. It's, and it helps you to stop weird. judging people. Right, like you see something on the right. news or whatever, and you go, well, I don't know the whole story there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I don't know the whole story as to why that person did that. You know? Right. I think yeah. Once you have all the clues, and it's part of the reason why that's part of the reason why I came to this theater is. Mm -hmm community story work, I, I think that it builds humanity, it builds right. understanding. Once you know someone's story, you really understand their motivations, you can't want to kill them. You can't <laughs> hate them, you know? <laughs> it would stop wars if everybody would just you still punch them in the face. <laughs> don't want to kill them. Yes. <laughs> okay, Rev, your story. How do you work your process? Uh, my new process, because my old process, since I used to do uh, HTY and that was I was getting paid for that, was when I would do community theater, it was what Pretty Girl was gonna be in the cast. <laughs> that was my old process. My new process, as I've developed <laughs> as an artist, is uh, starts with the script. I always- Cause you developed the script. <laughs> Cause you got a girlfriend. That's, Cause I have a girlfriend, no. No, it starts with the script. Um, yeah, I wanna read a script and I wanna close it. I wanna literally, when I close it, I wanna just be like, wow. Or, you know, just have that emotional response to it that there's something there that just make me, yeah, it took my breath away, something. Um, and if it's not that, I want to read it and go, dang, this dialogue is awesome. Like, I want to say this, you know? I love it when a playwright really knows how to write good dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, it's like my favorite thing as an actor. But then once I get the script, um, the process from there is uh, I've been blessed that I get a lot of uh, amazing actors, especially at Kumu. Kumu draws in all the really talented people in town yeah. that are good mm -hmm. in there. So, um, so it just makes your job so much easier as an actor to just listen and respond to the person with you. But I go through this whole breakdown of the script. I try to think of the script from an audience member's point of view, from a director's point of view, from the playwright's point of view, and then from what I read on my initial reading, um, I write down things I hate, things I love. Mm. I ask a lot of questions. I look at it as a dead body that I found, and there's a murder scene right there. And you're gonna animate it. Yeah, <laughs> well, I don't know about animated, but I always feel like a detective. Like, I'm trying to figure out, okay, you know, what would Columbo do? Did he get killed with the pipe? Was it Colonel Mustard with, you know, I'm trying to put this mystery oh. together and trying to flesh it out as much as possible so that when I have all that stuff built as a base, I can just go out there and That's do right. my thing. And then big process for me is rehearsals. Um, You're being wrong. My style is, yeah, I will go into rehearsal and I will have my intentions in my head, I'll have all my homework done, and yet I'll just be free to throw crap at the wall and see what sticks hey. sometimes. Me and him were, I was having such a problem with this character at Flowers, having such a problem with it. And so we're driving home yeah. and, we're, and we're trying to work it out. He's trying to help me. Thing. Yeah, you know what, and, and I'm like, and then we just, we thought we found it, right? I'm in, the, I'm in the car and I'm like, yeah, and I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna do this thing where I laugh and it's gonna make the whole thing make sense finally. The first scene and the last scene, it's gonna be perfect, it's gonna be beautiful. And then the next day at rehearsal, I did it, full blown, I did it and I'm like, huh, and then Harry goes, uh, why are you laughing? <laughs> and I looked at you and we just went, okay, that was wrong. Yeah, that, that didn't quite work, but yeah, being wrong. Yeah, I want to do so much work during rehearsals and not be set on something. Yeah. And Because I trust my director. I trust yeah. my director to help guide me along that way too. Um, but I also have to give them something that's going to inspire them to do that. So I'm always looking to give my director something. Every night, we're, I'm, I'm trying to entertain that guy. Because I figure yeah. if the director's bored, my audience is going to be bored. So I, when I go to rehearsals, yeah. and you'll testify, this, I try to entertain, you know, along with doing uh, my through line and all the actor objectives and all that stuff. But yeah, because once showtime comes, I want to just, it. I want to have everything let go and I want to have done all my work so well and so hard and get it so locked in that showtime I can just forget about it. It's there in my subconscious and I can just listen, respond and play and be in the moment and try to have as much fun as yeah. possible. Awesome. Yeah. We were, t I'm sorry. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, you're right. I, I love it that you both had processes that are, they're not uh, in opposition, but they're very different. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we definitely work different yeah. in rehearsals. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. But you know, we, we, we try to, we definitely, and we recognize in each other and with, and with a lot of the uh, actors around town and stuff, we can, you can pinpoint who's getting to that place. You know, if you're getting to that place, it's like you've done all of your work, and you've done all of your work, and then we're on stage together, you know, and we're all playing at this level. You know what I mean? We're all here to the point where when I look at you, you're not thinking what the next beat is. 
I don't want to see the homework that you did the night before in your eyes. I want to see because if I if my nose twitches, I want that to read on your face. You know, I want you to see that I did that. You know, because and and if it's the first run or if it's show 26 or if it's show 126, you know, that's where we live is in those moments and that's what keeps it from being stiff is that you saw my eye twitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. You saw me reach down and, and scratch my leg and you go, "Ah, oh, he's never done that before." Is he but I'm not changing the blocking. I'm not. We're still going to hit all the notes that all we set. All the intentions, all are the still intentions, the same. all the whatever. But we're alive here in this moment, you know. And that's what makes. Yeah, theater it's theater. living. It's breathing. It's breathing. That because is there anything worse than being on stage opposite someone yeah. and you know they're zapping? Yes. They are just yes. not there. It's, it's horrible. I, you want to pick them up and shake them? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that. I'm, I've done it. I've done this. <laughs> Look at me! I'm here. I am talking to yeah. you! Change, change. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nothing's registering, nothing. <laughs> They've locked out six weeks ago. Autopilot. During yeah. rehearsals, like collecting the, their check. Or you see their eyes reading the script, you know, they're right. moving, you know, right. they're just thinking right. of the, where those right. lines they're are on the page. They're there with you. Yeah. I flipped the page, Yes. by the way. I'm you flipped really it on sorry. yourself. I, <laughs> she wrapped herself up. I didn't up. want to be rude. I'm going to wrap myself up. It's been so nice having you guys here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Um, and in case you can't tell, the show Flowers of Hawaii is really awesome. It's an amazing experience as an actor, as an administrator for the theater, and also for our audience members, I, I, I think possibly foremost, to come and witness it. And you can find out more about the show if you go to kumukuhua.org or give us a call at 536-4441. And now we're going to wrap up. I have to read this. Uh, thank you to our stage <laughs> manager, Zuri. Thank you, Zuri. Bender. Um, <laughs> her name is Zuri Bender. Uh, thank you to our production manager, Ian Davidson, who is in my ear and about to fall out right now. To our communications <laughs> director, Chrissy Gothigan, and to Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put it all together. We hope you will join us again next week on Center Stage. That's Wednesday at 2 p.m. We are going to have Jordan Saluso, who's another actor in the show, who has stepped in to this remount of the show. So he's going to have a, a different story to tell us. And we are hoping that Lee Cataluna herself will be able to join us as well. I hope that we see you then. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.